Okay, so I get this question a lot. I'm going to answer this very truthfully and very honestly because I think you guys deserve to hear this. Counterfeits have improved since I first addressed them 10 years ago on this channel. Now, where have they improved? They all passed a light test. All the new counterfeits, to my knowledge, passed the light test. The problem with the light test, uh, the, the issue of the light test for them is everyone's phone has a flash. And then that flashlight can turn on and you can easily detect, right? If a card passes a light test or not, the light test is often the first test people do. And you might ask, okay, why does the proxy makers or whatever, why do they care it passes a light test? The closer to a real magic card, the proxy makers can get the card, the more money they can sell it. Let me repeat this again. The closer to a real magic card that they're making, the more money they can sell it, the higher the demand. You are not going to buy. I have no idea why there's a truck at like 3 a.m. in the morning outside my bedroom, but there it is. And um, you cannot buy or you, you cannot sell a proxy that is so fake looking it couldn't be used, right? The idea behind a proxy for a lot of people, especially counterfeits, is it passes for real, okay? And now uh, some people want to sell it, some people may just want to play with it, whatever, right? But uh, one thing that people do is they test, they do the light test. And in the past, they failed because they used a different core paper. They used a different color paper, actually. The uh, glue, whatever, is a blue glue instead of black, so it doesn't actually, you know, it shows, it shines over. So I am almost certain I can say this, all new counterfeits, especially from China, pass the light test. And they all pass the UV test. Back in the day, the UV test is very interesting because um, not even all magic cards pass the UV test. The most famous example was fourth, fourth edition, but supposedly, you know, some Japanese commander decks and so on, some other printing quality issues also don't pass the UV test. Um, so the paper is a certain type of paper where it shines differently under UV light. That's a UV test. I think the UV test is uh, kind of interesting because most people don't have a UV light. And this gets to my point. I'm going to prove out a shadow of a doubt that your collection has counterfeits because you didn't check the cards. You don't own a loop. 99% of Magic players don't own a loop. Whenever I see at a FNM, whenever I see a GP, even, even when we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars of cards, they're not looping. Uh, which I'll get to a little later. But okay, back to my point. The kerning and the, the rosettes, they look a lot better. Not perfect, but they do look a lot better. The one thing they have not gotten correct yet is the green dot test. I'm not gonna go over it. I've gone over it a million times. You can go online and figure it out. You know, if I had an editor, they would put an image so you can see what the difference. Essentially, every magic card has, you know, five colored dots, right? The green dot near the white portion of the green dot, like, you know, just the top half of the green dot will have either four red dots, tiny, tiny dots. We're talking about like, People say they can see it on the card. I, no, no, there's no way. You need a loop. The reason that they have not been able to um, counterfeit this mechanic is it's literally four or possibly three green dots or three red dots, like just dots, like microscopic gold dots. And secondly, they never had to because everyone does not like, like I said, the light test. So the first test they passed, besides the Ben test and all that stuff, was the light test because it's so easy. They just change, they find the right paper with the same type of see-through, right? But they had to pass that test because everyone's phone in America has a flashlight in it, okay? They had to pass the test because it was so simple to confirm, oh, there's no light showing, it's fake. Okay, cool. Well, your customer is embarrassed, you know, even though they knew it was fake, they were, they were trying to, you know, play EDH or their friend, whatever their excuse is, right? Maybe they're trying to sell it for God's sake but they need higher quality, the, the kernings, the lettering, all this stuff, right? And I would surmise the only reason that no one has, they have never even looked at the green dot tests, even though they do know it exists, is because there's no reason. 
when you're training, if the paper feels right, they pass, you know, the light test, it will pass the bend test, which they all do now. It's basically a done deal. No one actually has a loop. No one paid for the $15 money effing loop. My God, like, I, I mean, I, I'm seriously asking you guys, how many of you guys actually have loops? Let me know in comments below. I do not think the majority of you have loops. I've never seen a loop being done in a trade minus my own looping. I've never seen a loop. The loop is this tiny. Like you would think that people had loops, they would take them to all the events and you know, if they're ever doing a trade because these new cards, second problem or third problem, whatever, right? Um, the quality of the new cards are abysmal. <laughs> So one thing, the the fake cards, they're getting better in quality, right? Because they want to, you know, scam more people or whatever. They, so like, regardless of if you're, you're buying the fake proxy, the counterfeit, right? Whether or not you want to play or sell it, I don't care. You're probably hoping that no one identifies it as fake when you double sleeve it or whatever, right? That's the point of you getting this pro this high high quality proxy, they call it. Well, yeah, I mean, if a simple light test on everyone's phone can kind of out you, then you wouldn't be a happy customer, right? You would pay a little bit more for the, for the, the card to pass the light test. And that's what happened is, uh, they, they, it's one of the, you know, low lines of what they do. Uh, but none of them passed the green dot test. A, I think it's incredibly difficult to pass that test and it probably costs a lot of money to do so. Um, and B, no one ever has a loop to test it. I mean, go to your local F and M. Tell me how many, and then like, hey, does anyone have a loop? Nope. Your local game store probably doesn't even have a loop. There was a game store I went to all the time. Just kept just kept buying counterfeit cards, and like I taught them how to catch. They know no one cared, right? No one cared um, because they would sell. It doesn't matter if they're buying or selling. So anyway, my point is very simple. A lot of people have counterfeit cards. They just don't know because they don't have own a loop. How would you, I mean, unless you have like that micro, I've seen a microscope. I need to get one of those for Rolexes where it like you can look at the movement and so on. It looks really cool. It's a microscope and it goes onto your computer. I'm going to get one of those soon because then I can make videos showing you like what this all is. Matrixes and the dot, dot, dots, right? And the different kernings of different cards and the, the, the double black layer. I had to learn this, you know, I had to learn all of this very fast. And once I learned it, I was like, oh, well, it kind of makes sense why they can't do this, they can do this, they can't. Like, counterfeits are only gonna get better, guys. And I and the quality of printing for Magic is only gonna get worse as they print more and more to fill the land fills, right? People who don't think this is a big deal, I've never actually seen a good counterfeit before. They're still used to seeing the old ones, the old ones that are like made from Uno cards or whatever. Um, the new ones are just, you know, again, you gotta green dot it. Like if you are not using a loop, I don't even know what to say, man. I mean, like, um, I mean, I'll, I'll, one day I'll show you, I gotta get to buy one of those microscopes. Um, one day I'll show you, it is actually very interesting because a lot of magic cards today, they're, the inking is wrong. You've seen uh, New Phyrexia, the the bundle, the, comp like the the inking is like, there's like too much ink, there's too little ink, the inks is in like different layers, it looks kind of weird. Um, there are cards that are coming from Japan that feel very more like plastic than cardboard. Um, just there, there's a lot of different things and if you cannot authenticate your card, you're effed. If you cannot authenticate your card because you didn't pay $15 for a loop. Man, I mean, I don't know what to say. Like one of the things I do a lot of is I authenticate my friend's collections. Uh, they, they buy something, they don't use a loop and they bring it to me and they just want to know if it's real or not. And then they, I test it and then it's either real or not. Um, it is surprising. It is very shocking because a lot of the new cards, right? When they first kind of figured out how to do the little, the, those, it's really easy. They just kind of remove it and then restick it on the new card. Uh, they can do foils now too. The foils way differently. That's why I have a scale. So they don't do the old foils very well. They do the new foils okay. But a lot of times there is a weight difference because the foiling they use weighs differently from the foiling Wizard of Coast Illusion. 
And this is kind of also one of the reasons that um, in Pokemon, like, you know, base set, you, there's heavy and light packs, right? Uh, because the foil. So a heavy pack has foiling, uh, a light pack does not. Well, what I'm saying is that the, the counterfeits have too much foiling. They look too sparkly and therefore they're weighed differently. So I showed you the free tools I have. I have UV light, which is very good for foils, by the way. I have UV light. I have the light test uh, for my phone. I have a, uh, and also the, the um, little um, jeweler's loop also does a light test. I think all of them have that little light. You just have to buy another one when battery runs out. Battery lasts for a long time though. So you'll be good for like at least a year. Anyway, the counterfeits are a big issue. A lot of people don't want to talk about that because they be scared, right, of their collection. But like, you gotta, like, how are you gonna buy something and not loop it? And today, no, no, that cannot be. Anyway, bye guys.